Is this heaven? No, it's a podcast. Welcome to the Field of Geeks podcast. Welcome to Field of Geeks, episode 107. I'm Josh, and joining us today is a special guest. Please welcome Jonah Hardenbrook. Hi, Josh. Hey, how's it going? Excellent. Thanks for having me. Sure. Thanks for coming. Uh, apologies, no one else is here. Uh, Steve tried to drain Tony Stark underneath the table last night, and uh, Joey had his wisdom teeth pulled <laughs> out a week ago, so he can't talk really too much, and Mitch is driving some celebs. Would this so. be their loss or my loss? I don't know. All right. It remains to be seen, right? <laughs> Let's decide uh, after after we're done recording. <laughs> It'll be fun, though. It'll be fun. For those who don't know, we, we've been talking for almost an hour before we started this, so we're going to have fun. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a lot of fun. So, yeah, topics we're going to talk about today are James Bond, Venom, Captain Marvel, X-Men, Joker, and much more. Yes. I know you probably didn't prepare for this, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to get your uh, geek insights, but what basically makes you a geek? Oh, I, <laughs> it's tough because I don't consider myself necessarily a geek or a nerd, but I, I love all that stuff. I've been a toy collector since I was a little kid, into comics forever, sure. uh, tried writing comics, uh, love fantasy. I've tried role-playing games once. I can't get into that. <laughs> so my my geekiness has some limits, I guess. Sure. But uh, yeah, anything um, pop culture, I'm fascinated by it. Yeah. Hey, that counts. That counts to me. So you were more geeky than I was before I started this whole show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I go way back in my my geekiness. You paved the way. I do like your uh, your pictures you use of the J. Joe characters yes. and Transformers. Yeah. That, Those are awesome. Yeah. That's a rabbit hole that I don't know why I fell down, but I can't stop. It's cool. And so, yeah, for those that don't... It's better than the movies. For those that don't know, I like to take pictures of little plastic men <laughs> out in public. But... It's not weird at all. Yeah, Stop I'm not it. like taking them to the Stop mall. Staring. But it's like yeah. a park or a beach, something like that. <laughs> right, right. So right. I, I get some questions every once in a while or some stares and some people are like, oh, that's cool. Or I had that or... And then there's people who are like, what are you doing? So <laughs> Where's your kids? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. I like you to keep, took the picture? I like to keep a random kid in the background just in case I do get asked. I think he's over there. Right. Yeah. It's a family event. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. I think you're, you got a lot of geek cred and we'll get into the, your comics history pretty soon here. So let's get into movies. Let's talk James Bond. Are you, are you a big fan of James Bond? I do like James Bond. I love James Bond. Yeah. You like Daniel Craig pretty pretty well? Uh, yes, yep. very much so. He is probably my... F I don't know if he's my second or my first favorite yeah. James Bond. I was actually a big Roger Moore fan as well. I agree. I think some of the him. best James Bond movies were Roger Moore movies. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I was a big fan of Roger Moore. Really liked Daniel Craig's portrayal of the character and, and how edgy he was compared to some of the more refined right. Bonds we've had in the past. Sure. So I think that, yeah, Roger Moore... Daniel Craig, top one or two. Sean Connery right there at number three. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Pierce Brosnan, number four. Timothy Dalton, number five. And then George Lazenby. Yeah. Down there at the bottom. I like I liked George's movie, actually. I thought it was pretty good at as the a, time. As a child. It's very different. I did not like it. Yeah. I think I didn't like it as a kid because of how different it was. As right. an adult, I have a much better appreciation for it. I sure. had an opportunity last summer to go back and marathon all of the James Bond nice. movies. Because I was laid up I you know, with an injury. Oh, sure, sure. I wasn't moving around much for a couple of months. Right. And so I watched Miami Vice, all the James Bond movies. Not the movie, the show, right? The show, Miami Vice. <laughs> yeah. The I watched movie, the movie, too. But... The movie's like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like half a movie. It's half a movie, exactly. <laughs> Perfect description. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I'm a big Bond fan myself, and... You know, uh, Danny Boyle, big director, he, he dropped out recently. I was very excited because we were gonna get a we were gonna get a script written by like his his dude. I was stoked to see what Danny Boyle was gonna do with it because he's he's got such a distinct vision. Yeah, I think it could be much different than any of the other Daniel Craig movies. And actually, now that I think about it, I haven't even seen Spectre all the way through yet. It's such a uh, watered down version of Skyfall to me. Like, if you, I mean, marathoning all the films, you probably saw this too. There's a pattern with these producers. Yep. 
you know they've changed over time but there's always a pattern if something's successful they're gonna just totally redo it as much as they can until they they go too far moonraker style you know yeah and, i think specter was one of those where for me it was kind of a casualty of the the word of mouth that i was getting on it yeah because i'd started it and then i start hearing like oh it wasn't very good it wasn't very plausible yeah. Which is James Bond. It doesn't have to be plausible right, yeah, for me to enjoy yeah. it necessarily. But I was just hearing all of these these things. And after I started it and I kind of had gone doing something else, I just never went back to it. So yeah. I should at some point, especially before this next one comes up. As I've grown older, I've become more of a movie snob. I did watch Spectre for the first couple times, you know, critiqued it. Then one time I just shut my brain off and I enjoyed it. But, you know, it's like I should like, you know approach it both ways yeah you know yep yep like the new mission impossible films i think are a great example of the direction they should go into Dude. for sure uh mission impossible is one of those has just gotten better with every movie oh in yeah my, I in thought, my opinion yeah i thought after three it was done fallout was the best yeah that was, it was very good one was i liked one i liked De palma in general sure. and i liked the way that it was shot in that De palma style i liked that it tied Relatively closely to the original TV series. Yeah. Two was a John Woo film. Oh. I mean, you could have called it anything other than Mission Impossible, and it would have tough. still been the yeah. same Oof. John Woo movie. It's a tough watch. <laughs> Three I really enjoyed, yeah. uh, but then yeah, they just got better after that. Yeah, Ghost Protocol so, and... Rogue Nation. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought when they were making Rogue Nation, I'm like, what else can they do? Yeah. I didn't even think it was going to get better. It's not often that I'll go to a movie, get out of the theater and be like, I just want to go right back in and watch yeah. it again. And that was Fallout for me. It's an event. So. And Cruz is nuts. You know, he does all these stunts. <laughs> and I'm, I'm afraid he's going to die in the next one. He just keeps upping it. Like I heard maybe they'll go into space. I'm like, oh, man. No, that'll be it. He's that'll one of those. It. He's one of those actors. I don't like to tell people I'm a Tom Cruise fan yeah. because they think I'm the weirdo. <laughs> yeah. But. He's a strange dude, but he I is love strange. his movies. Yeah, he's, love, he's passionate. He even made that last dedicated. Mummy watchable. And yeah. Barely, but he made it watchable for me. Yeah. So. Well, I, I heard he might have helped ruin the film, too. <laughs> like, they made his character bigger. Yeah. Of course, it's Tom Cruise. Just make him the mummy. I mean, spoiler, they did. But in a way, I guess, right? Right. For those out there who are like, oh, no, I was just going to see spoiler it. Spoiler alert. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, you know, if, you're not gonna watch, if you haven't watched it, don't bother. I did, enjoy the, to... I did enjoy the Jekyll and Hyde, uh, Russell Crowe. I thought that was Yes, I thought that was a cool, uh, the way that they, because I wasn't expecting that. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that that was cool when they added that part in there. Yeah. Uh, and I really like, is it Jake Johnson? Yes. Who played. He's always kind of, funny. Kind of his partner. Yep. And he was I funny in I like Jake Johnson in that, too. I, I wanted too. more Jake Johnson. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's 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 a pretty talented guy. I remember he did um Let's Be Cops and uh I thought that movie was fairly underrated. Tag. Yeah. 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 It, you know, it broke the mold, you know. It wasn't like yep. this is you're not your typical I wanted him in uh, the next I wanted him in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And we didn't oh, get any I of him in that. So. I know. We just got like this mansion with a creepy old dude and <laughs> a daughter just gets into trouble. I made a billion dollars, but <laughs> which is good because that means we're going to get another one. True, I like them to actually finish their vision. The way they ended this one, mm -hmm. I want to see lion versus T Rex. <laughs> I want to see the Mosasaurus. It's going to be on the beach. Yeah, like give me the dinosaurs taking over the world. Do you remember? Uh, I think Tops did a trading card series called Dinosaur Attacks or Dinosaurs Attack. Like Mars Attacks. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But this was Dinosaurs. Nice. That's what I want in a movie. And I <laughs> I think there was rumors like way back when Spielberg was making um, Jurassic Park 2. two. Lost World, yeah. Yeah. The uh, I think there was rumors at that time of a possible Dinosaur Attacks movie. And I kind of think that that's why They're finally Steven getting Spielberg back to sort that. of beat him to the punch with, hey, here's a dinosaur in the city type thing. <laughs> yeah. I could be way off base. As right. a kid, that's what I remember hearing about. Uh, you never know. But that was like before internet. That was when I was getting all my movie knowledge from right. Cinescape magazine. <laughs> Starlog. Remember Starlog? <laughs> I do remember Starlog. Yeah. Getting back to Bond. We always go into tangents, so oh, yeah. it's totally cool. Um, we finally got a director to replace uh, Danny Boyle. And I'm going to probably botch this name, but he's American, which I think is rare. I don't think they've ever had American director for a Bond film. Carrie like, Joji Fukunaga. Thank you. Thank you. I believe. Uh, I'm That's, not familiar. Which yeah. season of True Detective did he... First one, which is the, the good one that's one. beloved. Yeah. Yes. He okay. did eight episodes of that one, and he did Netflix's Beast of No Nation, which had uh, Idris Elba. 
I think he might have got nominated for that. Which I haven't, wa- Oscars, I haven't watched that yet. I haven't either. Okay. I mean, there's so much stuff on Netflix I've not seen. They have, I heard the other day they have like 200 original shows. I'm like, how? <laughs> Where? Yeah, and I, I wonder if it's original shows or if it's shows that they have purchased Maybe. that they've then stuck their name on. True. Like that staircase documentary. Okay. I've not seen that. Yeah. Uh, Cause I think that documentary actually goes back much further than when Netflix. Oh yeah. Aired makes it. sense. But then yep. they stick their name on it. And well, like they picked up Lucifer. Yep. So that's going to have their name on it. Yep. And, um, that third movie, J.J. Abrams' property, um, the Alien. Oh, my oh gosh. one of one of the Cloverfield. Yes, yeah, the paradox. The, par- right? the Cloverfield paradox. I didn't see it, but I did. I, I it was enjoyable. Yeah. So. Well, I, I loved how they released it. They yep. teased it Super Bowl Sunday, and then it was out. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I I enjoyed that one. Yeah, I, I need to check that one out because I did enjoy the. Um, the one with John Goodman right before it. Oh, that was very... John Goodman's so oh, good so creepy. everything he does. Oh, he is so good at being he is, creepy. He is very good. And I don't know if you could say he's underrated. I think everyone loves John Goodman. But it feels like he doesn't have that... He should be like a leading man yeah. or something. You know, more parts. But he, it seems like he's getting that now. So. I th- yeah, I think back to like some of my my f- personal favorites. Yeah. John Goodman is usually there in some capacity. Yeah, he is. Like Big he Lebowski. Is. Yeah. He, he helped make that movie. Yeah, and he played a dick in uh, Revenge of the Nerds. He was the coach. Yep. yep. Like, wow. He did goes you, way uh, back. Did you watch, is it Death Sentence with mm. Kevin Bacon? Oh, gosh. No, I don't think I've seen that one. Okay. It's kind of a Death Wish-ish okay. knockoff. Where old film or kind of recent? 2000s. Okay. So not old. Kevin Bacon loses a loved one, and then he kind of like tries to go after him. I think it's Kevin Bacon. Okay, um, that sounds a little tries familiar. to go after him, but John Goodman is like the bad guy, and he is oh. so creepy. He's so creepy. He can do it all. He could be Bond. No, he, yeah. <laughs> I would probably watch that. It'd be more like a Casino Royale type. Well, um, like the old Woody Allen, right? Casino Royale. Tomic Blonde. He was great in. For those out there who haven't seen yes. Tomic Blonde, which I th- I was prepared for it to be a crappy movie. I really enjoyed it. I actually bought it after I rented it. Yeah, I think I watched that strictly for McAvoy. And yeah, really, really liked it. I just it. love the setting mm-hmm. and the the production. It just everything was. Just, oh, the fight scenes were brutal. Film. The fight scenes film. were so well done without being too. Uh, you know, a lot of the fight scenes are so heavily cut to where you can't tell what's going on. Right. These were done in a way that you can get a sense of the action, exactly. and it still puts you right in there. Well, so. just the art direction. I yeah. just loved all that stuff and the soundtrack. You know, so anyway, James Bond. Yeah. Hey, well, it's it's related. Spy spy genre. I think this is a good choice. Um, I hope it's a good last outing for Craig. Uh, honestly, when they said Boyle was out, I was like, you know, I'm I'm kind of ready for new Bond. Let's just do it. Yeah, I'm. I've really liked Craig's as Bond, and I think one of the things I really like about his Bond movies is how closely they're all tied together. Mm-hmm. And I hope we get a little more of that with this to really finish telling his story of Bond. Yeah. And then we can f- start fresh with another one. Um, I don't even know who I'd want to see as the next Bond. Well, there's got... been several rumors. Yeah. I know when I heard like the Idris Elbow one, I was like, yes, please. That'd be great. The only problem is like the same age. I'm I like, Ugh. you might get one or two out of them. One or you two do a back to back maybe. Yeah. Um, Henry Cavill has been mentioned, especially, you know, we're going to get to this. We're going to talk about the Superman departure question mark. Um, but yeah, he was great in A Man from Oakle, so I think he could totally rock that. Only problem is if they ever make a sequel to Man from Uncle, I don't think they can use him again. <laughs> yeah. You know? But he's too big of a star. I think that's the problem. Like the Bond has to kind of be an unknown. They and they should just sign him up for like all these pictures and just shoot him. Like Roger Moore did one every two years. Yep. Just knock him out and just get a writer's room. Get good scripts. Yep. I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but Sometimes I don't think it really is, is it? You know, I mean, no. a lot of people in Hollywood are like get over your egos and just do something good. Yeah. You know? Well, and even if, with Hollywood, even if it's not good, they'll still do it anyway. Oh yeah. Hello, yeah. Transformers. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this. Um, won't be here till 2020. I think Craig will be 52 by then. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I man, I, Casino Royale is just such a great film, and I had my doubts when they cast him. And I was so ready to go after that first film. But then you had the writer's strike and Quantum. Actually, I don't mind Quantum too much. Um, That's probably the more forgettable 
of them. Yeah, it is. One where I, I'm like, I know I've seen it, but I couldn't tell you really what happens. But I thought it was better than Sky, or, uh, Spectre. I mean, yeah. sadly, Spectre had so much going for it. And it just like yeah. the dialogue, some of the dialogue, I'm like, who wrote this? <laughs> like, this is shit. And Skyfall was easily the best of them. Yeah. Uh, that movie was classic that was that was very good yeah. it, it's it's, it, it's been a nice refreshing take on james bond to bring him down more to that kind of street level ish yeah. type hero because with the pierce brosnan films especially towards the end dude, they were so bonkers yeah they were basically like roger moore films but with a bigger budget yeah and i think he was a, a fan of roger moore's and i admired for what he, what he was doing at the time like i didn't i wasn't a big golden eye fan but tomorrow never dies i loved as a kid but it's the opposite now. Goldeneye is yeah. Goldeneye, I, I love Goldeneye. Goldeneye is great. Tomorrow never dies. Uh, that's the news. The newspaper mobile. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's really. It's hokey now. Yeah. Yeah. But I <laughs> do admire it. Like they really, and it's another pattern the the producers do. Like Goldeneye didn't have a lot of Bond uh, themes to it in a way it did, but it played it safe kind of. Yeah. And then that probably didn't. That was probably some of the notes. And so they just totally like went three sixty. And just amped up everything. And that's what Tomorrow Never Dies was. Yep, it was yep. like, big soundtrack. She's sleeping with all these chicks. I mean, just all this stuff. you have uh, The World Is Not Enough. Yeah, then they slow it down. Yeah. See, they go too far, then they slow it down. But that was kind of a... I don't know. That was tough. And, well, Die Another Day. Oof. Now, Die Another Day, was that the Hal Berry? Yeah. Thing? Okay. Yeah, that was... Oof. Yeah, I don't know if I would even if I would use the term "jump the shark." But it's probably the worst Bond film made. I sadly. would probably agree with that. That sucks because so. Brosnan wasn't done yet, and the, they pretty much fired him. They wanted to yeah. reboot. They had to reboot. They had much. to. They had to. It just got too crazy. So, yeah, this will drop, and it'll be probably Craig's last film. I hope because you know I'm sorry I don't want my Bond pushing sixty. You know, I will hopefully have a chance to go back and finish Spectre before this one comes out. That is my goal. Well, so it sounds like I've got some time. When you do, you know, if you ever want to come here and do a commentary on it, it's going to be a Batman Robin fest. Not that bad, but, you know, just, we're going to have fun <laughs> with it because, man. Hell yeah. Some of it's just like, <clears throat> why? Venom. Uh, are you a big fan of Venom? I do like Venom. Were you expecting it to be rated R or PG-13? I was, I was expecting it to be rated R mm -hmm. initially. I'm okay with it being PG-13. I am too. I'm not one of those people who, like, I think some movies do need to be rated R. Like Alien versus Predator, mm -hmm. I think suffered because it was PG thirteen. They yeah. should have gone for the hard R, like they did with Requiem, right? Which I think Requiem was a better film because mm -hmm. of that. Sure. So I think some need to be rated R. I don't think a Venom movie necessarily does. I didn't think you know the Wolf, uh, Logan necessarily needed it, but I think it worked because of it. And then you know Deadpool, you got it. that should be in yeah. my opinion. If you make that PG thirteen, yeah. Venom though, um, no, I, I think. PG-13 will be okay, because even with PG-13, they can still really push the envelope pretty far. I don't know how far they'll go with this. Um, well, a lot of stuff I read, they were like, oh, PG-13, they're treating it like as a kid's film. Like, no, have you seen some PG-13? Yeah. They they can be opposite yeah. quite I remember watching like PG-13 movies back in the day, like HBO, there was one that they would play. Was it like just one of the guys? And you see boobs. <laughs> and it was a PG-13 movie. Oh, right, right. Yeah, because they had those weird rules, the... Um, the MPAA or yeah. whatever. I saw a documentary on them one time. It's very like secret organization. And it's just odd how they, Kevin Smith was in it and he yep. was talking about how weird, like some, this was good, but this wasn't. And it ended up being like worse. Like something along the lines of you can use the F word. Yeah. You like get like one once, F word or two. But also too, I don't think it can be used as a verb. Yep. Because yeah. I think like, there's weird, there's weird things to it, but. But like, you know, with that said, yeah, I they can still do quite a bit with Venom. You know, yes. I think it's going to be fine. And I, you know, I think my, my first reaction was, ah, that's stupid. But then I was like, well, they're going to make more money if it's PG-13. You yep. have a better chance. And it's gotten some bad press. And it's getting some good press. I mean, Tom Hardy's in it. I don't think he would commit to something if it was stupid. I really like Tom Hardy. Yeah. His accent's a little weird in this. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't know what the accent like, what's is. What's wrong, man? Are you okay? But yeah, you feeling all right, Tom? <laughs> but I love Tom Hardy in yeah. everything I've seen him in so far. So and I think, yeah, he'll deliver. He's one of those guys that can be like, he can look really big. Mm -hmm. Like in a movie like um, that one with Shia LaBeouf, Lawless. Yeah. He can look big. Oh, yeah. And then he can also look just like regular sized dude. Yeah. Like in, now granted, 
He was a twig in the like early 2000s. Yeah. He was in Star Trek Nemesis and he was in Band of Brothers. Yep. And yeah, if you look at those pictures, he's not the same dude. Like yeah. he was my favorite part of Dunkirk. I don't know if you've seen Dunkirk yet. Yes, I agree. I agree. He was awesome in that. And he sat in an airplane cockpit the entire time. Best aerial battles I've seen. Like realistic to I me. Love, I love it that It just movie. felt like in, it's Nolan. Nolan loves authenticity. So they actually flew those damn planes up there. You know, Tom Hardy probably really got captured just to make it, me- you know, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> that film was confusing, but yeah, he was great. Yep. Just didn't understand the overlapping and going back. Yeah, it just it, jarred watching me a little it bit. was a little confusing. Yeah. And then once towards the end when you mm-hmm. kind of lay it all out and I'm like, okay, now I see what they've done. Yeah. But at the time it was because like, I remember watching, I was like, well, wait, why is it dark now? Right. And it's light here and they're on the, the, the sea is not that large. I'm like, what's going <laughs> this on? This is not that large of a yeah, sea. Yeah, right, right, yeah. I, yeah, I took my 80-year-old grandpa to it. And oh, don't do that. If it's like my grandpa, it would be nothing but questions. Oh, but see, I had no idea they were going to do that with yeah. the film. But I know I know, no one was going to put a twist on it. You yeah. know, no one's never going to make something like, you know, take, for instance, the Tarantino movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he's making right now about the Manson murders. You know that's going to be some kind of quirky twist to it. It's not going to yes. be like your your normal, you know, biopic, whatever. Um, but yeah, um you know, I was hoping we get the Saving Private Ryan experience because I, you know, we went together back in the day, and that was such a great film. And this was good too, but yeah, it confused him. I know <laughs> yeah. it did. I can um, see that I, he didn't I, really I, talk much after we saw it. Yeah, so I was like, oh, that wasn't the uh, experience I wanted. But <laughs> I mean, I liked it. I just I had so many questions. You know, I was just like, yeah. kind of know what's going on, but I don't. You know, the one thing about Venom that yeah, I learned from the, just the trailer is I been pronouncing the word symbiote wrong my entire life <laughs> how'd they say it in the trailer i think it's symbiote 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 and i've yeah. always said like symbiote or something like that but it's one of those words too that i don't think i've ever actually heard anyone pronounce right. out loud until i see this trailer and i was like ah, are they saying it wrong or have i been saying it wrong it's been criticized i think i've been saying it wrong the entire time I, a lot of uh, comic critics are saying it's wrong how they're saying it so i don't know anymore it's so like, how, how are they saying it should be said just symbiote, symbiote or whatever. Symbi- okay. Yeah, symbiote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right. how it was before, because it probably never was mentioned unless it was a cartoon or something. Yeah, and I don't remember. I know from the Spider-Man cartoon that I would watch. Yeah, you know, as a teenager, I don't remember them saying it, but I'm sure they did. They and probably, I probably just amped it up. They for probably the said it the same way it, as I did, and yeah. so I never picked up on them saying it. I, I do so. applaud them for making Venom bigger than Hardy. I think that's really a good direction. Agreed. It's not like he's wearing a suit. Clearly, he's not. <laughs> it's just just massive and yeah it's gonna be interesting how they handle that convenience store scene with the pg-13 i mean i guess we'll cut away like they did in the trailer right right i don't need to see the dude eaten so that, i'm okay with that yeah <laughs> that was weird <laughs> and then it looks like are we getting a carnage in this it looks I like you got that one know. clip at the end of the trailer yeah, and i'm like that yeah. looks like it could well, be carnage woody harrelson hasn't been shown yet so he's supposed to be something big too so he might be playing cletus might. cassidy Maybe. So I hope it turns out well. If it doesn't, it's probably not going to be, you know, because Disney's taken over everything. And so, yep. yeah. It, well, I'm sorry. Disney's not taking over Sony. Apologies. I'm used to them taking over everything else. But no, Sony's <laughs> still, uh, they got that partnership with Spider-Man. So Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good, it's good that they worked out that deal. I think so Venom's like their own both. thing. Yeah. Yep. But I, I would hope to see Peter Parker in there, just as Peter Parker, maybe. Or name drop him. Just give me his name. Yeah. Give me a J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Talking about Peter Parker, and that'll make me happy. Well, like he works in the at the paper. Maybe you could cross paths with them. They just have like a look, and that's yep. like, you know you can either do something with that or just leave. Yeah. It alone. Have have Robbie Williams throw like a copy of the paper down on Hardy's <laughs> desk, and it's got a picture of like a blurry picture of Spider Man. Yeah. Like, that'd be cool. That would be. I, would I be hope happy we'll get that. some surprises like that. I I think it's I think it's gonna be fine. It, it'll get more people out to see it. I hope it's. Uh, Hope it's successful. Well, ultimately, it, I hope it's good. You know, is it Robbie Roberts or Robbie Williams? What's Robbie's last name? Someone will correct us. Uh, is he part of the paper? Yeah, oh, one God. of the editors. I don't know. Robbie Williams. That's the singer. Yeah, I think I said Robbie Williams, but I don't think that's. Hey, what Robbie Williams. I guess Robbie singer Roberts would be awesome too. Robbie Roberts is more comic booky. I'm like, why is he in this film? This is awesome. I loved your songs in the '90s. It was great. Captain Marvel. That trailer dropped. That was um, something we discussed last time. We got those images from Entertainment Weekly, and I thought they looked pretty cool. And even though the trailer is basically a teaser, I enjoyed it. I've seen it many times. So what was your take on it? Me and Captain Marvel, I don't have a lot of affinity mm-hmm. for the character in general. I don't general. know much about her, honestly. So I think the first time I ever really knew of Captain Marvel was reading 
Mighty Avengers by Bendis. And it was one of those books where all of the characters sounded the same anyway. They mm-hmm. did, to me, they didn't really have a distinct voice. I didn't get much right. characterization from Captain Marvel to really know or even care about her. Uh, that being said, this trailer looks so good. It Especially her crashing awesome. the blockbuster. Like, oh man, I was like, I that was really sad at yeah, the same time. That does a really good job of setting the the tone and the time and place. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, if it was like a movies to go, I'd have been, <laughs> <laughs> or been a little more on the head. Yeah, movies. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it looks so good. And I know you guys last week, I believe we we're talking about some of the parallels with what you had seen with Green Lantern. Yeah. I can definitely see that there are some parallels there. She's a fighter pilot. <laughs> she goes off and it looks like she gets uh becomes part of a, a alien um military. Yeah, the Cree. Yeah. The Cree, yep. Uh so there are some parallels there, but uh, this looks It looks great. Like Steve said, they'll make it better. <laughs> yeah, it's like Green Lantern done right. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. looks it, I think it looks really good. Um, uh, yeah, it's very um it's an interesting direction, but I think it's really cool for her to you uh it's gonna be like to me, it's going to be an origin pick, but in flashbacks. That's good because you don't have to really focus on it too long. You get into the main – all origin films suffer from that. It's usually like it's the the villains shoved in at the end, you know, and then – Right. And then it's kind of like, eh, it was good until then. But she looks great for the part. Very happy. I never imagined her, you know, getting to this uh, level of playing a superhero. You know, I remember her in 21 Jump Street and – I don't know that I remember her in anything. The room, or not the room, room. I think it's called. Not the time, not the Tommy Wise No film, but the room she won an Oscar for. I think, and that's when I really noticed her. Wait, and what was that about? It was based on a real event. Uh, I don't recall the girl's name, but she was kidnapped, and she had uh, her kidnapper's baby, and they were in this room all the time, and then she escaped one day with the kid. Is that on Netflix National right now? It might be, or Amazon Prime. Okay, I think I was reading something about that. Yeah, it sounds familiar. So that's probably but what I haven't got watched her this it yet. part. I'm okay. guessing. I mean, this is really what shot her, and she did Kong Skull Island. She was a photographer in that film. Uh, Tom Hiddleston was in yes. that film as well. Okay, so. now I do remember her in yeah. that, and I love Skull Island. Underrated, in my opinion. It was it was fun, fun film. Fun film. They went for it. You know, at first I was like, you know, I Peter Jackson's might have been better, but I hate to say it, I did revisit Peter Jackson's. I'm like. Peter it's Jackson's a, is hard to watch it more is than hard. once. It's a tough movie to watch, it especially the it's, ending. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it's, it's so depressing. Well, it's a big film, too, and it takes a turn when they arrive on the island. I forget yeah. all about that, you know, the, all the the tribe just, like, kills them. It's like, whoa. Yeah, this one maintained a, a lot of the uh, the fun Yeah, that it started out with. It was serious enough. It had mm. the right amount of humor injected into it. I wasn't sure how Yeah, with... Um, Oh, the pilot who was stranded on the the actor's name eludes me. John right C. Now. Riley. I wasn't sure how his character was going to go. I didn't know if it was going to be like distracting having him in there being this funny guy, but it was good. It was I liked it. He's like, oh, you're all going to die. And here. the action was great. Oh man, he's uh very talented. But yeah, she and it's got John Goodman. Exactly. We got we came back to John Goodman. It's awesome. And Samuel Jackson. Yep. So yeah, he looks great in this Captain Marvel trailer. Uh, it looks young. He does. You know. It's crazy. He's pushing like sixty, or he might even be sixty. And it nuts. looks like it is. It doesn't look CGI'd. I mean, it looks like him. It yeah. looks like either practical makeup effects. But I bet a lot of that. Maybe close ups. They they took out some wrinkles. They botox the shit yeah. out of him before they filmed it. <laughs> then he couldn't talk. And like <laughs> we got it. We got can't emote. <laughs> and you got to see Coulson really briefly. Yep. Rocking a. It kind of looked like a wig. So I don't know. Maybe it's just a. You know, he had a lot of hair on his head. So. Obviously, it's in the '90s. You got to make him look younger. So yeah, I'm almost surprised they didn't go with a different actor who kind of looks like yeah, it's Greg, true, but, it's true, yeah, uh, someone who could definitely be younger because I think you're going to age more. Because how old was he supposed to be in in the Avenger movies in the Shield? Probably forties. Forties. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going back almost twenty years, true. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think I I actually like think I look the same <laughs> yeah. from twenty years ago, but and I you're know like, I don't. Who's that handsome guy? Yeah. Like, oh, that's me. Oh. I know I do not. Oh, I don't want to see that. Oh, I, I'm ha- I'm happy for him to be back finally in a, in a Marvel film because you know Agents of Shield doesn't really they don't really acknowledge it like the the television show acknowledges the movies, but you know yeah. they got that separation st- with, with studios TV film. Yeah, I'm happy to see him back. I think uh, it'll be pretty cool. I heard I don't know if this is rumor. Heard his character 
He's a huge MC Hammer fan. And he's like wearing pants like him. So I don't know. I kind of hope that's... How far back in the 90s are we going? I don't here? know. <laughs> yeah, because Hammer was early 90s, right? So. I was wearing Hammer pants in like 91, 92 maybe. Yeah. So. It must be that then. I don't know. Interesting. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I, we'll see if that's even true. You know, any more of the internet. There's so many rumors out there. But the special effects look incredible. I can't wait to see more. Jude Law looks great. Yep. He's got some con... I love when actors have contacts, you know? Not like uh, Jason Momoa, you know, he had the creepy white contacts, but like I like when they have like, you know, like Hemdell had the, you know, the uh, gold like yes. eyes. And yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that really tweaks your appearance because, you know, Jude Law pretty much looks the same in every film. Maybe a beard here or there, but it looks like he's going to be pretty noticeable. So, yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to this one. So I was ready to see more. I loved her helmet. I thought that was cool. I had no idea she's going to have a helmet. Like, yes. I love that. Yeah. With the glowing eyes. I don't know how how much we'll see of that, but it looks it looks pretty damn cool, I must say. Might get at least one or two scenes or You gotta see the face. It's just like Iron Man anymore. Right. These damn nanobots make it so he can just hey, remember me? I'm Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. Like, okay, we get it. Put the thing back on, you look cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I definitely want to see how it's gonna tie in with the next Avengers movie. Because uh, I think that's the answer to all the problems, you know, the, yep. the ending we had, which I'm still amazed some people, and I give them a pass because they don't know the comics well, and I can't say I really do, but I know it's not, that's not the end. Like, right. they're going to, you know, some characters will probably stay dead, but they're going to bring some back. Relax. They have to it's bring gonna be some okay. back. It's going to be all right. I just remember watching that movie, because I, I saw it in the theater by myself, because yeah. none of my family wanted to go, and then after I had purchased it on iTunes, I was watching it with my wife and son, and from the beginning, my son's like, if Spider-Man dies, I'm done. <laughs> I was like, just watch the movie. Watch the movie. And keep in mind, there's another Spider-Man movie coming out, all right? Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, when that happened, I'm like, okay, guys, we know he's making two more films, so yeah. relax. Hey, kid's not done yet. So. Although I heard the Far From Home may take place before Infinity War, but come on, it's Spider-Man. It's... They- they're going to yeah. bring him back somehow, some way. And it, maybe it, it's a Miles Morales Spider-Man that mm-hmm. they bring back, and I would be okay with that, well, too. Look at Guardians. Of course, you know, with the director fallout, that probably won't happen for a while. Yeah. Um, sadly, they had to dismiss the crew, but... That was kind of heartbreaking for me. Yeah, it was. It was. It's like, ugh, damn it. But I just look at all the stupid things that I've posted on social media in the past, and I'm like, ugh. Well, don't if you apologize for it, you know. Right. We've debated that here, and it's a subject you... You know, either way, you're going to come off as a dick or whatever for either agreeing to it or not agreeing to it you know he's very talented but it to me it's not like he didn't do anything he just says some stupid shit no and i and i realize and there is a risk for i don't want to put him and i in the same category because we're not but there is a risk for people like him and i who are not comedians Mm -hmm. to make jokes right right because we are not right daniel tosh right i can't get away with saying the stuff that that he can say yeah exactly exactly Exactly. But yeah, see what happens there. But obviously, uh, we're going to have some happy endings with some of those characters. So that won't be too bad. I'm, I'm more, it's not so much the, cause I know we, I know we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. What I'm really excited for is how do we get there? The journey uh, of getting there. How do they solve this problem that seems seemingly impossible to overcome? How are we going to get there? Yes. That's what I'm really stoked for. The rumor is time travel is involved because there's scenes from the first Avengers. They're reshooting. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You got Cap in that suit again. It's like, this is going to be cool. I think, you know, I'm not worried about it at all. The Russos, they, man, they just knock it out. Oh, yeah. They've done no wrong yet. So just a matter of time, though, before they may be getting like burned out. But they're, they're, you know, two man team. So that does help, you know balance that you know because i know favreau at one time was considered to do avengers and after iron man 2 i just kind of too much for him to handle i think yeah they wanted a lot of shield influence and didn't make as much so yeah i have faith in russo's will be they'll be just fine we're gonna we're gonna be okay uh, i wish this next part was better well it's still questionable you know when it first broke i'm talking about henry cavill possibly leaving the role of superman we all know him for right now it appears him and wb has some negotiation fallouts over a Shazam cameo and therefore eliminating any other appearances he would make. So, yeah, when that broke, like every news uh, agency reported it and then it kind of got dismissed by his agent and then WB uh, put out a statement not really denying it or... 
I really wish WB would just get their shit together <sighs> when it comes to these movies. Yeah. Almost every episode, we could easily bitch about them for two hours. It's just... I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, and... When I first announced this universe, I was like, in my head, I have great movies to give you. You know, it's like, they, they, have, they can do it. Come on. Dude. They've got almost 100 year, almost 100 years mm-hmm. of source material to draw on for, yeah. for these characters. And they just can't get, they just can't get Their it right. Their egos get in the way. And they, you know, they, their staff changes. Such yep. a high t- turnover, you know. It's like, give someone a chance. They yeah. had to kind of clean up a mess here. I um, I like... Henry as that character. Yes. I didn't care for the movies themselves necessarily. Right. Like I didn't care for Man of Steel, but it wasn't because of, of Henry Cavill. Yeah. Cavill. He's Christopher Reeve jacked up to me. Like, yeah, exactly. He, it's amazing how yeah. they cast that. Um, I didn't ever see Batman vs Superman and I have not seen justice league. Okay. In full disclosure. Yeah. I'm probably losing a lot of geek cred here. One for getting, I don't know. You probably wrong. gained some. <laughs> And two, because some are passionate <laughs> with these movies, like with Batman v Superman. The thing with that is, it looked so overly done with the CGI; mm-hmm. it was distracting for me from the trailers. And I didn't know if I didn't know if I'd if I'd like that. Yeah. And then I, you know, then you start hearing things about it, and it's like, okay, well, maybe I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, yeah. The if you ever see it, see the extended cut. I recommend that. All it's right. a long watch. Take a break, maybe intermission somewhere. Right. Um, but Batman, I think that's the best suit I've seen on screen personally, and I, I think Affleck does a pretty damn good job. Justice League, it seems like he's phoning it in, but I think that's after the backlash. Yeah, I would kill your little vibe from portraying somebody, you know. And he's going through uh, alcohol problems and stuff, so yeah, yeah. I, I do want to see. I definitely want to see Justice League just so I can talk about it. Mm-hmm. And have some knowledge because otherwise I'm just like, yeah, I haven't seen it. It's a fun film. It's not yeah, the issue. Yeah, it's just, I it's not to, Avengers Infinity War, you know. I have um, to get the the motivation <laughs> yeah. to want to watch it. It's a quick film, too. I, I hear you. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, God, I really hope this isn't true. I hope they can work it out. It's understandable if he wants more money to me because he's a bigger star now than he was when he signed on. You know, he has Mission Impossible. Did the man from Uncle? Uh, he just got cast in Netflix's The Witcher series, right? Which I'm not too familiar with. I'm not sure if you are. If it's, I have not heard a lot about it's a it. Big, big deal, I guess. So I think gonna... I've seen a trailer for it or yeah. some publicity information on it, but I haven't seen it yet. I think he's going to play the main character, and I think he he went after that part. Uh, I think the word is, you know, there's a lot of rumors with WB, but currently the rumors are. They don't have plans for any more Superman movies, standalone films. Supergirl's the main focus. And this also broke, which was kind of weird. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, they wanted to cast as his replacement. But who knows how much this is true. I know a lot of people freaked out about that, you know, for various reasons. He is a big deal right now, you know. Yeah. There is a black Superman, uh, Calvin Ellis, which is on Earth D. Yep. So th- that's who he could play. Yeah, and I think... I have no issue with, you know, some people would say, well, Superman's not black. Yeah. There is one. There is a black Superman out there. Mm-hmm. I have no issues with that whatsoever. And I think Michael B. Jordan is, and it may, he would be a great fit mm-hmm. for that character. It's just, can they pull it off in a way that makes sense? Yeah. Is where I was, what I would be concerned with. What would you do if you are WB with these properties? What would you do? Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Well, first I'd pick up a comic. <laughs> And then I would hire that team of whatever comic I liked, like, hey, make a film for me, will you? We'll get a director. Oh, man. So many things I would do. I Endless things. I mean, do you start from scratch? Do you just Oh, smoke? as of in this case? Yeah, I mean, smoke bomb the entire thing and start all over again. Or do you try and build upon what you've already done, mm-hmm. but make it make sense? Because keep in mind, you've got Aquaman still coming out. Yeah. Um, Shazam. Shazam. Wonder Woman, 2. Wonder Woman 2. So you still have these properties that are in the works. Yeah. You simply can't reboot, I don't think, in this case, because you have... I mean, I guess these standalone films could kind of just exist, and then they could join a new rebooted uh, Justice League or whatever. I would for sure crank out another Man of Steel. I think that's a given. Like, yep. give him one more shot. Uh, Matthew Vaughn wanted to direct it, supposedly. And with his Kingsman films, like, man, he could really make a, a big, colorful film with Superman. Yeah. And he also did uh, the X-Men First Class. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And he would have done Days of Future Past, but him and Singer had a fallout. So 
because I think Singer wanted to embrace what he made before, which, you know, as a fan of, uh, of that time, I enjoyed, but I'm glad he's not doing any more X-Men films, yeah. you know? I was really hoping for another Brett Ratner. Oh, really? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not, not God, no. I was like, oh, <laughs> no, that's tough, man. That is tough, but... I think it'd be a mistake to lose Cavo. I would I would pay him what he wants, honestly. Just freaking make a Man of Steel too. It's it's a given. Like yeah. yes, Supergirl is great. But everyone wants to see Superman right now and they want to see more of him. And you know, it's nice that we've gotten more films with him in him. Just like he's very colorful in it. Like they amped up the color and really traditional Superman. They they overcorrected probably too much. Because you're going from BVS to Justice League. And you could tell, like, there just wasn't a transition. You yeah. Know? I still think, yeah, they could at least do a Man of Steel too. If that doesn't do well, then I, I guess I would see. I don't. know. To me, I'm more of like pick up the pieces and just, you know, make it better. Yeah. Like when Amazing Spider-Man two bombed, I still thought, you know what, just learn from the mistakes and just keep going forward. Make a three. They were going to make a uh, Sinister Six, which would have been the first villain-led film. You know, uh, Suicide Squad replaced that. If you would say that or not i don't know <laughs> i don't know there's so many things they should do and they just they don't do any of them like honestly every one of us have better ideas than what they're doing currently it just amazes me you know this is a big property definitely a batman solo film would be would be great not really needed but they should maybe put these characters in like they were with shazam supposedly drop them in and maybe that would get you some interest to see a, another solo film I, I don't understand the whole um, Zack Snyder backlash. You know, I think he has great vision. And if WB really wanted to not change a few things, they should have mandated that. I don't think they did. So he decided to do his own thing. And then right. they got freaked out about it. And they're yeah. like, you're banished. Yep. Even though they made him cut a lot of things down. The ultimate cut of BBS is much better. It's got too much plot going for it i think in the end it's like you gotta have fun with this it can't always be serious but i did enjoy affleck's batman and yeah easily you could see you know a nightwing film i mean there's so many things they're talking about i i, I don't even know if the supergirl thing how serious they are about it you know it feels like sometimes they're just saying shit yeah you know it's like they don't know i think i think supergirl has a lot of potential yeah i don't know that when you think of like DC's big three, mm -hmm. you know, you've got Wonder Woman, you've got Batman, you got Superman. You don't have Supergirl. Aquaman's never even been up, been up there. Yeah. I think this new movie though looks decent. Yeah. I'll probably go see it. Mm -hmm. um, mostly just for Black Manta. I think Black Manta looks fantastic. Yeah. They're like, you know what? Pull him from the page. Yeah, That's how he's going to he look. He does. He looks just like he did in the most recent, I would just read like a Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm graphic novel with him in it and he looks just like he does on the screen and i think that that's great and i want more of that yes that's that's one thing i i would also do is pull as much look from the comics as you can get that's i guess not laughable you know like marvel can do that with some of his characters i applaud him from captain america because that could have easily been like black suit we're gonna x-men you up and even though like uh winter soldier in the beginning his suit was like a dark blue right they put a star on him and the, the stripes, and yeah, I think uh, there's no, no, nothing wrong about that, and it honors the character. It's iconic looking, and yeah, that's just another thing I would do. And you know, if you wanted Michael B. Jordan for this Earth D Superman, let's say, then establish a multiverse, and then there you go. There's your way in. They just need to establish something, and they just rushed it with Justice League. It was going to be a two parter film, and I think that's just their mistake there, and it's not Cavell's fault. And it's not his, I don't think it's his fault for wanting more money. He's an actor and you're hot one minute and then next year you're, you're right. out and, you know, might as well get the money while you're worth it. I think he's worth it. He's a big name and a lot of other people are interested in him. So we'll see what happens with all that. I mean, WB could change any minute. A lot of people think maybe it was strategy. They wanted press, but I don't think they're that smart. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. If they want to start and if they want to start with something like or focus on a Supergirl. That's great. Let's bring in more of those second tiered B list characters into it. Yeah. And then possibly get a, a Titans movie out of it. Right. Something like that. Like you said, give me a night, give me Dick Grayson as Nightwing. Give me, I even would even go like way further down the hole. I want a rag. Give me Ragman. Yeah. You don't have to do an origin either. You no, can just pick these characters up and people will read about them and learn more about them. Yep. 
do flashbacks maybe of some of their origins, but don't really address it big time. And then that's how you can just make one big film after another, and it covers up a lot of ground. And then you can spin off from that, like yeah. Supergirl, if you introduce her in the film. And there's enough people like, I loved her. Instead of putting all the right. money on one solo film, we have a series in that right now on television. So it's like... Yeah, and that's you know, one of the things that blows my mind is how well they can handle these characters and these properties on television. Yeah. Yet they can't where the where the big bucks are. Yeah. They're missing the boat there totally. Well, a lot of people are like, why don't they just have it be one universe? I, I get that to a certain point, but then you have to, you know, uh, you know, it's always fun to use a lot of theatrics to tell an origin tell. And if you accept those television properties with lower budgets, you're accepting all that content and i could see some of that them not wanting to use or you know it's very complex but yeah the easy thing would have been yeah it's all one universe here you go and it's already established um or even continue on from the nolan trilogy uh with a different actor even like james bond the batman concept you could have that be already uh canon so you already feel like you've gotten your batman films and you're okay with this this new batman so, yeah, there's a lot of things they, they definitely could do. And like I said, we all have better ideas. I, yep. I believe that. So, I think one thing that I would change or one thing that I would definitely do if I was going to do a, a Man of Steel or another Superman yeah. movie, bring back Michael Rosenbaum as Lex Luthor from Smallville. Oh, yeah, he yeah. so good as Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a man. Yeah, Jesse Eisenberg. Oof, man. Yeah. That's tough, man. That was just... Just from like... Again, because I haven't seen the movie, but mm-hmm. just from what little bits of it I have seen, it just seems a very, very odd casting choice. Well, spoiler, I'm not going to describe the whole scene, but there's a there's a after credit scene in Justice League, and he's he's a lot more calmer. So they did kind of course correct him a little bit. But my ideal Luther is one from the animated series, just kind of like, you know, he can get the chicks. He's he's smooth, but he's also you know very mysterious and yeah and that's villainous yeah my lex luther is because you have to think in the you know lex luther became president of the united states right and so for me lex luther is <laughs> manipulative yeah he can toe that line between good and bad right to where you don't really know what his you know is he my friend is he my enemy and that was like the relationship he always had with superman in that smallville series mm-hmm. are they friends are they enemies right where's right. that line at and i think that that's something that that character needs to possess because right. the Lex Luthor, uh, Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor was like a parody in my yeah. opinion. He was a parody of Real Lex Real estate Luther. huckster. Yeah. yeah. Loud I mean, suits. <laughs> Kevin Spacey, a little closer to what yeah. I was looking for out of that character. I don't even know if we could, are we allowed to even say his name yeah. like on the air? Cause <laughs> we just can't have him on. Yeah. Like he right. wants to be on. Um, just the vitriol around that now. It's, oh, I, I know. Yeah, but that go back to then. Yeah. That was more closer to what I wanted. He was to perfect see from casting. He just yeah, kind of phoned it casting. in, and it just kind of was wooden. You know, it wasn't really that whole like, Superman movie was phoned in. It was weird. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked great. It had a lot of going for it. I loved the world, the metropolis they had, and the art direction. And it was kind of like an homage to the Reeve films, the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Like that's another thing I would put in these films, which they did in Justice League. They put some of the iconic soundtracks in there. The Elfman theme and the John Williams theme, Superman. Little, little a, yep. a bit of it, but yeah, I would totally just like, hey, we own these songs, right? Warner Brothers, just boom, there you go. And I want to see a Superman movie where he, and I know he does it in Man of Steel, but I want to see throw a punch. Yeah, come on, man, hit something. Oh yeah, they they overcorrected so much for after returns <laughs> that people complain like he broke, he destroyed buildings. Like, all right, what do you want? Yeah, you want him to lift a rock or do you want him to hit something? <laughs> So we'll see what happens with WB. That's just an ongoing fiasco. I hope they get it right one of these days. I mean, honestly, the Aquaman and Shazam, I think, look pretty good. So I, I like Shazam, how it's going to, it seems to be very kid friendly. I think that's okay, given the, you know, I, given how material. dark they take everything else. Yeah. I am excited for yeah, he's this. He's drinking soda and Yeah, stuff. I'm excited for this take on it. And, the, and it really lends itself well to that type of a character. Yeah. And if you want to throw a little darkness in there, give us some uh, black uh, black Adam. Yeah, because and I I like that character even better than Shazam himself. Sure. Or Cap, let's say what he is. he's Captain Marvel. Right. I like him better than Captain yeah. Marvel. <laughs> he's the original, I think, or something. So, Very something confusing. Like it's like these comic properties borrow from each other. It's weird. Don't think about it too hard, or you'll <laughs> bleed from your ears. So X Men, uh, you know, we were talking about Singer just recently. 
Yeah, the Fox Disney deal is about done, and Disney's CEO Bob Iger said that Kevin Feige will most likely have a lead leadership role with this new X Men genre, whatever they're doing with it. It's obviously going to be probably a whole restart of everything. Currently, they have X Men Dark Phoenix and New Mutants going under reshoots. Dark Phoenix, a lot of it has leaked, unless it's not accurate. It's very X Men Last Stand vibes. Wait, is, oh, uh, the uh, Dark Phoenix? Yes, yes, which is like, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're trying to redo the last stand here? What are you doing? I, th- You know, that's going to be the issue with that whole Dark Phoenix concept, mm-hmm. is it is going to come up like a rehash of yeah. Last Stand, but hopefully it's done better. Well, these reshoots, uh, I think they're shooting reshooting the whole film, basically. So it, it'll either be jarring or fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, Justice League, uh, you know, it was all right, but... They they changed a lot of the original film, so it'll be interesting to see because with the X Men films, I really liked First Class. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Days of Future Past was done really well. I like that one. I was yeah. a little annoyed at first that it wasn't Kitty Pride they were sending back in time, yeah. but I understand it's a Hugh Jackman movie. Like yeah. I, I get it, uh, but Apocalypse fell a little flat for me. Uh, it was okay. I really liked a lot of the cast. Mm-hmm. Like I I really liked um, the gal that. You know, plays Jean Grey, what, Sophie Turner. Yep. You know, Ty Sheridan, a Cyclops, I thought was was really good. I'd like to see more of that. I think Fazbender is a perfect Magneto. Mm-hmm. McAvoy is a great Professor X. I want to see more of that. Yeah. Um. So I hope they can get it right with this next one. It, it had some good moments. You know, I I really liked how when Cyclops destroyed Xavier's grandfather's tree. I thought that was a funny moment. Yeah. And. Uh, the ending with the suits, I got as closest to the 90s look as we ever got. And I knew at that time, looking at the previews, like, that's probably going to be the last 10 minutes of the film. Yep. And then guess what? We're not getting those suits in this uh, Dark Phoenix so far. They've redone them again. And they, to me, they look like shit. Are we going to get more Olivia Munn as Psylocke? I don't think she's in it. No? <sighs> Maybe these reshoots she will be. I don't know. I mean, it, it sounds like it's a it's a total dog shit mess of a film. I'm like, wow, that's just not it's not good. Um, it, that's too bad. It and, is. It is. But hopefully, again, it's one of those things where they can bring him into the proper Marvel Universe. They can essentially start over, build from scratch. Because just like the X-Men comic books, they've already watered down mm-hmm. and diluted the continuity so much with these movies. Yeah. I know people who can't stand it just because they don't know what's they don't yeah, know what's going right, on. Right. Uh, they can't follow it, and so hopefully, starting from scratch, I think will benefit those movies. I just would like to see some of those same actors. Mm-hmm. I know that can be tough when you're trying to start over. And but Bond did it. Casino Royale. They took Judy Dench. Yeah, that was kind of confusing, but great. You yep. know, they like, hey, you worked, you worked, boom, yeah. here you go. So yeah, give me some of this what worked and just and put it into the proper. I Marvel can see universe. them definitely. Maybe possibly taking some of the current cast and yeah. using them again. Uh, it might be confusing, but maybe Avengers 4 will make way in, a, in an odd way to reboot everything. Yeah, I mean, maybe if they are able to reset some of that, Yeah, maybe that is what introduces mutants into that world. Yes, but I want I want more color from them. Get away from these dark suits. Yeah. Uh, just, just embrace what you are. A shorter Wolverine, make him more like an animal, which they probably will this time around, you know? Because Jackman was just, he was just such an icon and he's like six foot something. You know, he's a big dude, but <laughs> right. I mean, he made those films and uh shouldn't take that away from him. But yeah, I think they're, they're definitely going to go in a great new direction. A lot of people are going to be pleased about. And uh there's word that Fox may try to still make that Channing Tatum uh, Gambit film because they are on a, they're running out of time basically right. for projects. So the word is they plan to shoot February 15th. And released it June 2019. So that is part of the deal. If they have anything in production, a certain time frame, they can still finish it. So it's not like Disney can come in and say, nope, it's gone. We're halting everything. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, but I'm sure they'll make X-Men look great. And it'll just add to the universe. There's already so many characters. It's crazy. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do with Gambit. He's Because that character can be a tough sell. On his own, probably. On his own, yeah. yeah. And I think it'll help having Channing, yeah. Channing Tatum's name attached to it. At least you'll get the women in the theater. Yeah. To of see it. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be, it'll be tough. So. He must really love the character because this has been like they've three been years talk- in they've the been, making or so. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've been talking about a Gambit movie for, yeah. for a oh, decade yeah. or yeah. more. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see uh, what, what they're able to do with it. Give me 90s Gambit. I want that look. Yes. I don't want the, uh, 
or or Wolverine Origins look. I don't know. I didn't like that too well. It just wasn't iconic looking, you know? It just not enough flash for me, you know? No, I think everyone's forgotten that Wolverine Origins <laughs> even existed, so we're okay. <laughs> They're like, what? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about Michael B. Jordan a minute ago. Uh, Rainbow Six, he's been cast as John Clark, which is a Tom Clancy character. Yep. Paramount's in meetings with writers and directors currently. They plan to make a two film series out of this. Without Remorse is supposed to be the first film. John Clark, he was in 17 novels. He premiered in 88, The Cardinal of the Kremlin. William Defoe played him in Clear and Present Danger, and Lee Shriver played him in Some of All Fears. This is like another Jack Ryan character that's been played many times by other actors. Uh, finally, getting his own solo. It's good. To, yeah, it's good to yeah. see him get his due because, in like you said, in seventeen novels, he's a very prolific character. I guess so. Yeah, in that world, I didn't know he had such a big uh, presence because I've I've only seen Clear and Present Danger take and Some yep. of All Fears. I had no idea he had this massive backstory. Yeah, and I, I know we were talking earlier off air. I've read Without Remorse. I've read Clear and Present Danger. I actually have a copy of The Cardinal of the Kremlin. But really? I've never read it. Yeah. But I have a copy of it on my bookshelf. Nice. Um, he's a cool character. And Willem Dafoe missed the mark, I think, with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, Leif Schreiber did a, a much better job. And I would I yeah. would have been fine seeing him come back. Especially sure. after seeing what he's done with you know playing Ray Donovan in that Ray Donovan series. Yeah. He's so good in that. Right. And I want to see him bring some of that into a John Clark type character. Sure. They're probably going for the youthful approach, which. Yeah, I get it. If they weren't, though, yeah, sign him up for sure. But yeah, I think Michael B. Jordan will be just fine. And, you know, we got John Krasinski playing Jack Ryan um, on the Amazon show. How cool would it be if they did a team up movie with the two of them? That would be pretty neat. Yeah, I would be for that for sure. Uh, That's, yeah, the Jack Ryan character has been, you know, they've had a lot of. The last two films have been misses pretty much. Um, my ideal, we were talking about this, Alec Baldwin's take on on him with uh, The Hunt for October. It's one of my favorite films. It's just so damn good. Got to be cool if they got like John McTiernan back. Like late 80s John McTiernan. Not, <laughs> right. Not the jailed up one. But um, yeah, get him back. Uh, I just love the, the feel and look of that film. It was so damn good. And you know, the, the Ford ones were good too. Um, I lo- yeah, Ford, he, that was my Jack Ryan. I yeah. remember seeing Hunt for the Red October in the theaters. To me, that was a Sean Connery movie. True. It was yep. not even a Jack, you know, it was not an Alec Baldwin or a Jack Ryan movie. Yep. That was a Sean Connery movie. That's true, yeah. And Sam Neill. Can't forget about Sam Neill. Yeah, Neal. heck yeah. Then, right before uh, Grant. But so, yeah, Patriot Games, I remember seeing that on video when it came out. Yeah. That whole last scene with the night vision goggles and the power out and the running around the house. Oh, yeah, and the boat. I can't tell you how many times Ooh. my brother and I <laughs> shut off the lights in the house. We had our our... Fake night vision goggles, and we ran around <laughs> with our water gun Uzis. Nice. So, oh, that's good. Yeah, Sean Bean. He was in Patriot Games. He was yep. big bad guy. Yeah, um, yeah. I love these films. I love especially when they work. I love them. You know. Yeah, I even uh, I even liked Clear and Present Danger. I know you know John Clark wasn't my favorite part of it. I didn't hate. Yeah, I didn't hate. He that was one. rather forgettable. But I remember seeing that movie three times in the theater just because wow. I liked it that much. Yeah. The Sum of All Fears is a hard watch now. Back then when it came out, I liked it. But watching it now, I'm like, man, this is not good. I th- I remember it was on TV, I think, recently. Mm-hmm. And I switched over to it. Yeah. And it, it just has not aged well. It's just the dialogue. Yeah. Well, Lee Schreiber is the best part of that film. Yeah. When he goes yeah. on his little mission and stuff, like that's the best part of it. Yeah. Th- th- it just did not age well for me. And did um, you see um, uh, Shadow Recruit? That was tough. I did, but... I don't remember anything about it. The only thing cool about it was it was before the hunt for October. So everything they talked about in the hunt for October about him being injured, talking about Jack Ryan, of course, and had to relearn to walk. They did all that with uh, Chris um, Pine Chris Pine. take on yep. it. So that was kind of cool to see. But and again, not really how I visioned it. So <laughs> Yeah, but. You know, uh, it looks like Amazon's doing it right now, so that's great. And I need to check out that series still. It's high on my list of things to yes, watch. Same here. The issue is, is I hung the TV that I plug my my Fire Stick into. Mm-hmm. I hung it up on the wall, so now the, the plug doesn't reach. Oh no! Or the cord doesn't reach the plug. <laughs> no. So I essentially, I just got to take it to a different TV. <laughs> I just haven't done that yet. Yeah. Right. Right. It's definitely on my list too. And yeah, Steve. So he's probably finished it by now. He talked about it last time, and he had nothing but yeah. He had me stoked. He had me more so stoked to check it out. Mm-hmm. So I, it, like I said, it's oh, it's I'm up very there. excited. I hope this um, 
This uh, I don't know if it's gonna be called. I think it's gonna be called Re- Without Remorse. The first film. It's based off. Um, well, there's a Rainbow Six book mm-hmm. that spawned popular video game series. Oh yeah. John Clark was the center of attention, I guess, in that book. So I'm definitely for this. I think I think it's a good idea, and at least at least they're planning just two films, not like a trilogy. I think that's what hurts a lot of these properties. You know, they're just like we're gonna make all these films, and they just yeah. make one, and it's like. Eh. So maybe they'll do it back to back, but yeah, that's great. I I don't know about the Superman thing, but we know he's going to be John Clark. So. I think he's a. Gr- I think he'll be a, a, a really good John Clark. Yes, yes, I think that'd be very, very cool. The Joker. We got a nice Sears portrait studio <laughs> shot of Joaquin Phoenix. Olin, I think it was by Olin Mills. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Very creepy. Uh, very. Um, I never did see the film, but Old Country for Old Men, the uh, Harvey R. Bardeen character, he kind of has that haircut. Yeah, you know, with yeah. the bangs and stuff. You've not seen No Country for Old Men. No, forgive me, I have not. No, you need to. But I, yeah, he creeps me out though. I've seen clips. A lot of that vibe with this Joker character. The director Todd Phillips, he keeps releasing a lot of stills, which is great. I think it's really amping us up. <laughs> it's very odd that WB is doing this, but at the same time, I just read they completed a Joker Harley Quinn script, which is going to have Jared Leto. And I'm like, do, uh, I they're going to run the risk of confusing doing? their audiences. And I know they've done it. Yeah, I know. I don't know what this Joker story is going to be based on. There was a, I want to say it was a Vertigo title Joker that Brian Azzarello mm. wrote years ago. And that goes into a lot of the backstory of them and right. kind of pre-Joker Joker. Yeah. And I could see it being something like that. Yeah. I just don't know if, I don't know if it can carry its own film. It's definitely a one-off feeling to me. Yeah. And I think that's, I don't see Phoenix uh, signing a multi-picture deal. He was going to play Doctor Strange at one point, but he, he didn't do that. And I think that's because he, he's such a thespian. He's not going to commit to a commercial property like that even though this is a but it's their own take it looks like so yesterday they finally released um and i don't think it's the final look for him it maybe it is it's interesting either way but they released this uh, motion clip it's a camera test Mm -hmm. and they gradually revealed his joker look and it's very creepy very serial killer vibe yes to it yeah what'd you what'd you think about all this so far you've seen (laughs) <laughs> Before I saw the motion picture, when I yeah. just saw the the picture of him with the makeup on, <laughs> it was very jarring because yeah. it was not what I was expecting. Kind of like Heath Ledger jarring when he first saw that. In right. a way, right? In a way, yeah. 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 But different though, because mm-hmm. this it was very uh, this was very bright, yes, and cartoony, yeah. And that's not what I was expecting from it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be open minded about this. Yeah, I am too. I am too because I think you know why. You know, Joaquin Phoenix doesn't do a bad job. Yeah. Really with anything that he does. I mean, even science was, yeah. <laughs> was all right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm open minded. I definitely want to see more. Jury's out on this one. I just the timing I'm not a fan of. You know, I if there was if the Dark Knight trilogy ended and we had that gap like we did for a little bit, that'd be a good time to do this. Now I don't know. It's just like you said, it's confusing. Yeah. But, you know, loyal fans won't be confused. They'll know it's a one-off. But a lot of people are going to be like, I thought Jared Leto was the Joker. You know, right. It's like, it looks very terrifying. And it's set in the 80s, so it's got it's got a gritty look to it. Scorsese's producing this thing, so there must be some greatness in it. Robert De Niro's going to be in it, which anymore, De Niro kind of phones it in to me. So I don't even, yeah, he, yeah. He hasn't I, really been good for a while. It used to mean something when he was going to be in something. Now it's just like. What was the last yeah. good movie that De Niro made? Well, um, what was, uh, he did two back-to-back films with Bradley Cooper. Those were all right. I thought those were pretty good. Was that because he didn't make Bradley Cooper act with a tennis ball? Yeah. Like everyone since? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Yeah. That could have been it. Yeah. God, what were those movies called? Hustle? Something Hustle? I should know. This is terrible, but he did pretty good in those. I thought right. that was kind of a good comeback, but other than that, it's like. Yeah, he's it's a paycheck, you yeah. know. So, who knows? Uh, people are probably going to be there more for Joaquin Phoenix just because he's so quirky and weird. Right, and right. They were going to have Alec Baldwin play Thomas Wayne, but he dropped out, and now they got Brett Cullen to replace him. And this guy has been in the Batman universe before in films. He was in Dark Knight Rises. He played the congressman that Catwoman captured, which he didn't seem to really know he was kidnapped. He was just drunk the whole time. <laughs> 
And he was in Ghost Rider. He played Nick Cage's character's father in the flashbacks. Oh, okay. All right. But he's a character. He's been in a lot of shows, person of interest, uh, several things. So The Replacements, if you want to go that far back, the Keanu Reeves film. He was the quarterback that yeah, oh, got yes. his car overturned yeah. by... Uh, that's a good film. That's kind of a guilty pleasure. I like that movie. It's good. It's got a great soundtrack. But yeah, he's going to be the new Thomas Wayne. I really hope they're not going to make him kind of a buffoon version. That's the rumor. Like they're going to change his character. And I'm just thinking how how could Bruce get inspiration to be Batman if his dad was just a piece of shit, you know? Right, right. So I hope that's not true. But... Yeah, I hope they don't go that route. And I also hope they don't go the route of the Joker being the one that kills Thomas Wayne. Yeah, right. Right. That's kind of like getting back to the Keaton right. <laughs> Batman. It's going to be very in- uh, interesting. So I-, I hope it's good. Again, it's like, well, if it doesn't turn out to be great, then it's like, it's such a waste of time. And WB is going to be like, well, we didn't make our money. So guess what? We're cutting the budget yeah, for these so other now, films. Yeah. Now Deathstroke doesn't get a movie. And yeah. all these other villains that uh, could carry a movie would not get a movie. That's what makes me so, oh, it's just frustrating. Uh, moving on to DC. We're in comics now. Batman Damned number one oh, yes. came out. Oh, yes. This is DC's black label line, which is for mature um, audiences. I didn't really know about this much until um, actually it was Joey who uh, pinged it to our group saying, uh, yeah, they showed Batman's penis in a comic. Yeah. Someone put on my Facebook feed because I, I posted that out there. And I was like, why DC? Why? And someone was like, <laughs> Bruce Wang. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, there's a, there's a scene in this comic where, um, and I guess the comic's about him and John Constantine teaming up. Joker died, and they're trying to figure out how or why or something like that. Uh, it was written by Brian. Um, a, this is the same. So, yeah, Brian Azaretto and Lee. I don't know if it's, Berme, I think it's Bermejo. Better than I can come up with. Uh, yeah. I, that's the same team that did that Joker graphic novel I was referencing. Okay. So, and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Azarello's other work, but he did a a, a series called uh, 100 Bullets, kind of a, a Sounds mob familiar. story. Okay. That was really good. I mean, he's got... So it might be a good book. And it's Lee's just... a great artist. Yeah. And so it, it... Yeah, this was very, very jarring for me when I when I learned about it. Yeah, it's like, is it necessary? Uh, I don't think so. But yeah, supposedly uh, after Batman gets confused and doesn't think he's right in the head, he comes to the Batcave, gets out of the car, strips down, wants the Bat computer to scan him, and he's exposing a certain member that we've never seen. Yep. Oddly had a cape on it. No, I'm kidding. He didn't. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, the last shot, I think, is of his bare ass. And a lot of people are actually more upset that he doesn't have any scarring. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this could be maybe like a... Uh... Not having read it, this could be like a Batman Year One type thing. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. You think, I mean, he's going to at least wear some type of yeah. protection to in me, case though, someone kicks him in the yeah yeah in the bits. I, I guess I get the ass shot, but we don't need to see his penis. Like that's stupid. That's just make. That's basically like making an R rated film just to make an R rated film. Right. You know? That was my issue with it. It's just it's gratuitous for gratuity's sake. It's yeah. It's not adding anything to the story. Right. I mean, if anything. I think that Batman would have a relatively small penis because he is overcompensating. <laughs> have for you something. seen his toys? <laughs> yeah. Any, any time that someone wants to be the peak or the pinnacle yeah. of human achievement when it comes to body in yeah. mind, you're overcompensating for a little wiener. Yeah. Right. Well, and they, sh- they shadowed everything else. And then that thing is just boom, here we yeah. go. And it's just like, come on, artistically, just shadow that shit. We get it. Well, and even it's shadowed, but not enough. I mean, it's still, no, it's no. still veiny. It's, everything's <laughs> black, but then boom. It's like, what? And it looks like it's like at a weird angle. Like, what's going on there? Well, it hangs. Everyone's hangs differently. Come and on. apparently there's no armor underneath his suit. Like, ouch. Yeah, that's the thing. I was <laughs> there's like, no cup. No way. Yeah, the guy's going to wear at least a jock or a dance belt or something. It's just for shock and awe's sake. You know, they got these headlines now about, hey, Batman's an atheist and so-and-so only eats red meat. And it's like, I don't really give a shit about all this. It's like, just <laughs> tell a good story. Like, why? It just feels desperate. Yeah. Just... Tell the story. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of characters that work well in a kind of a, a mature reader's line. And they've done it in the past with their Vertigo imprint. And even if you go back into the 80s, they had mature readers line up. Uh, you know, there's a character called Vigilante mm-hmm. that worked really well in that setting. I just don't think Batman's it. I mean, that'd be like putting Spider-Man in a rated R book. Or yeah. Putting, you know, Captain America 
in a rated R book and showing off, mm-hmm. you know, his, yeah. his little America. Yeah, I told Mitch in our group. I don't know if you remember Loaded Weapon One, but there's a scene where it's a it's a it's a parody of a Lethal Weapon. Yes, there's a scene where Emilio Estevez is just walking around with his butt out, you know, and he's asked why, and he's like, "I just am," or something, you know, just just to be showy with it. To bre- like, there's to no be reason gratuitous. for it. Yeah, yeah, there's no reason yeah. for it. I don't know. The book itself, I'm sure, is great. I think this has helped sell. Unfortunately, I, I hope. Uh, they're not going to do more crazy things. <laughs> like, we'll see Alfred's now. <laughs> oh. Like, come on. This is stupid. Yeah, I guess future releases are going to censor that out. I don't know. They got more press. So they're they on did. a roll. <laughs> yeah, go get your copy now while you can. <laughs> well, I think my I think Joey said that they were sold out at the local comic store. Oh, that does not surprise me. <laughs> comic geeks are like, we got girls in here. <laughs> And some dudes. Yeah. <laughs> People are buying up all the copies thinking they'll be worth a gillet They're just ripping dollars the page someday, out. right? <laughs> Interesting. Let's talk about your comic history here. Um, plug it away, man. Well, where do you want to start? Like the very beginning or kind of like... Sure. Uh, so years ago, uh, this was probably I don't know, 13 years ago, had a chance to, through my brother-in-law meet uh, a local artist, uh, Anthony Lucia. Uh, They were college friends. And so we'd meet like family functions, that sort of thing. And then back in, I can't even tell you which year it was, but whenever we went, it was Celebration 3 in Indianapolis. That was kind of a road trip that the three of us took and really got to know him. Talked a lot about, you know, when you're driving eight hours on a road trip, you have a chance to talk about a lot of weird shit. Yeah. We talked about a lot of comic books. Nice. You know, ideas that he had, ideas that I had, and, you know, we just shared a lot of things. The, uh, you know, a couple years later, I'm approached by my brother-in-law, Chris, and Anthony, and he started drawing one of the ideas that he's had for a long time. He started actually started putting it into a comic book format, and they'd asked if I would help with uh, kind of putting some words to it. Nice. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And that's kind of how, like, Antidote Comics came about. And one of the things that we set out to do as like a small self publishing is we didn't want to spare any expense. I mean, we went like falls right. out in terms of uh, the look, the feel, the material of the paper, everything. We wanted to look as much like a actual published comic that you would buy off the newsstand or through diamond. Sure. Even though we were putting it out ourselves and going to, you know, sell it on the local convention circuit, that sort of thing. Sure. You know, we had big plans with it as well. And so blood zone was the first book that we'd done. And uh, we had a launch party. We took it to uh, local comic conventions, uh, you know, Fall Con in Minnesota, Planet Comic Con down in Kansas City, Wizard nice. World Chicago, yeah. uh, Iowa, the Icon here. We had gotten in some local um, companies as well that we had approached for advertising. And then we also had put it in their and their shops that sure. they were selling also. And it was a lot, of, it was a lot of fun. After the first issue, we wanted to do more. We did, uh, the next one we'd worked on was Blackjack, which was a kind of a, a grindhouse Western that I'd come up with. I've always been a fan of like both of those things and it kind of nice. put it together. And that was the next one. And the funny thing about this one is Anthony drew that also. He drew it completely on like cardboard with a ballpoint pen. And really? so it was a very strange way of doing it. It worked really well. It really That's added to awesome. the tone that we were going for. Sure. And that was the uh, the second book. Now, the thing that happened is we had printed so many copies of Blood Zone number one. Mm-hmm. I'm still sitting on hundreds of copies of this. <laughs> we had printed so many copies that when we were going to print that first issue of Blackjack, we dialed it back because we were already you know in debt. We dialed it back. So we were printing less copies of Blackjack. Sure. When I say less, I'm talking like 3,000 less copies, something like that. But that came with a higher price point. So then we tried to sell that at these conventions at a higher price point. We had a lot of ideas going forward for Blood Zone Issue 2. I actually have like the first three or four of those completely scripted out. Nice. Uh, we had ideas for more Blackjack issues. Had I think I've got the first five or six of that one scripted. And then I got another 30 outlined wow. to keep going with that. So as we were working on these comics, um, brought in a couple of other folks to help out with the coloring duties. We brought in another artist who was actually going to work on Blackjack issue two. And um, 
I don't know how many of those he'd actually gotten finished. Mm-hmm. He, we first did like a small, uh, short web comic that we were going to put on our website. Nice. That took place before Blackjack issue one to kind of introduce you to a couple of the characters. Sure. And so that was going to go on the website. Well, at the same time that we're working on these comics, you know, we're going to conventions and we're not selling the issues like we think we should. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, these comics, you know, three, maybe four dollars a piece. We should sell these like hotcakes. People would pick them up, flip through them and be like, oh, yeah, this looks great. And then put it right back down. And so we're just like, oh, what are we what are we missing here? Yeah, yeah. It didn't help that. So then Anthony started working on kind of these one off these prints that he was doing on the side. And he would spend, you know, three or four months on a comic book that people will flip through for 20, 30 seconds, put down and say, hey, this looks great. Good job. Yeah. And not buy. And then they would look at these prints that he would spend eight hours on and they'd be like, oh, how much is that? 20 bucks? Yeah, I'll take, let me take one of those or let me take one of each. And yeah. And he just found that he could, he could make a lot more money on these prints. Right, right. And so that's kind of where, you know, he wanted to focus his attention toward. And that was fine because we had, uh, you know, another guy that was working on the art chores for Blackjack too. Sure. Well then, uh, sadly he passed away. Oh, okay. Uh, it was unexpected and, and sudden. And so that kind of left us in, in limbo for a little bit. Sure. His name, his name was Chad. And what he and I's plan was to do was to knock out issues two and three of Blackjack, solicit it to image mm-hmm. with a schedule of possibly releasing every other month, which would give us essentially six month leeway to get a couple more issues knocked out. Sure. That was our plan. Mm-hmm. Now we never got to that point, you know, with Anthony finding the great success and it's really well deserved because his art is fantastic mm-hmm. in these prints. That's, you know, what he began focusing on. Sure. And eventually the kind of whole thing just went by the wayside and, you know, I don't want to say it fell apart because it just kind of became dormant. Yeah. I think would be a better word for it. I totally understand how that goes. So I yeah. would love to see, you know, some of those ideas and concepts resurrected. I give him every time I see Anthony, I'm like, when's Blackjack 2 coming out? <laughs> like, I give him shit all the time. Well, that's like a, uh, have you guys, I mean, I'm sure you thought everything, but like digital platform. I know you said like, uh, yeah, I think the issue was, uh, it, the issue had sort of become what we had time for, yeah. What we wanted to do, where, yeah, we did consider digital. I'm a fan of old school. I don't even read books digitally. I like to pick up a copy, and I'm the same way with comics. And that's sure. kind of why we focused on that initially, right? Right. And maybe going back, yes, we probably could have done it digitally, and maybe it would be a little bit of a different turnout. I don't know that it necessarily would have been. I think the same sure. events would have happened. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a really good experience. Again, I, I go back and, and read some of these old scripts and things, and I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> that's not good. And I think that, you know, I've improved a bit over time. And, and it's been nice because now what I've been able to do is take some of those, you know, some of those ideas that I'd had that I wanted to see as a comic book format and say, okay, well, I can still have these realized in other sure. venues. So now it's become like a, a prose story as a novel. Yeah. So I've got a couple of different things planned. I got to finish one before I can really dive deep into the other ones. Gotcha. I do have a lot of that kind of stuff planned. It's just a matter of getting it done. What's is time? The hard thing. Time it's, is the it worst. Is time. I've had so many ideas for you know this show and other things I want to do, but yeah, I've got kids. You got kids, uh, and you got work. At like, work. I would love to do this full time. I've got work. I've got work. I've got kids. I've yeah. got hobbies. I take pictures of little plastic men. Yeah, there you go. I mean, there all you that go. stuff yeah. is time consuming, and then the. It's, it's so people are like, well, yeah, just sit down and do it. It's so much easier to like, to say that you're going to do it, but to actually sit down and put pen to paper. Well, you have to have the mindset too, you know? You do. It's, it is a challenge. Yeah, exactly. You have to take, you know, you can't be distracted. It's very, very, uh, it, I, I think it's difficult. I think anyone who says that writing is easy, I think is lying because right. I think it's incredibly difficult and yeah. I, incredible props to those that can do it mm-hmm. and that those that do it well yeah. and do a lot of it. Right. Um, I think that's amazing. Maybe I'll get there someday. I don't know, but well, at least you have like outlines, like you said. Like, yeah, it was it's little... not. It it could happen any time. It's yep. just you know time. Time is the issue. And if you win the lottery, oh yeah, we're gonna see some movies. Oh yeah, movie. It's funny because you know when we were doing the, when we were you know making these comics, I actually we had you know you always have those dreams, those hopes. Yeah. And when someone comes up to you, and they're like, hey, they're like, I think you know I was approached by someone, and they're like, yeah, I think. There's a producer I'm working with. We think this would be a great TV series on sci-fi or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And so you, then I spend, you know, tons of time writing a treatment 
right. and uh and sending that over to him and then crickets you hear nothing well i hope you can finish more yeah i mean and it, it's yeah we lost chad he became a really good friend of mine sure and it, it was tragic and it's sad everyone else who was involved has gone on to find great success with other things. I mean, sure. Anthony is still working in that field. He's still doing a lot of designs. Sure. sure. Uh, my, my brother-in-law, he's a very successful business owner. He owns tattoo shops uh, around the city nice. here. Yeah. So it, you know, it, it is good. It, I mean, for the yeah. most part, it's ended up really well for everybody. And, and again, I hope yeah. to revisit it uh, someday. So if you know one. any artists that are looking to work for free, cause that's the tough thing. Yeah, it is. That is the, that is the tough thing is, is, you know, there's people like, oh yeah, I wanted to do this and or I want to do that. And it's like, okay, well, here's kind of what we can do or here's what we can right, work out. Right. And it's funny because when we would set up at comic conventions, people approached us like we were like we were a publishing company mm-hmm. and they would bring us their pitches and they would bring us their portfolios oh, wow. and they would want to work for us. Yeah, yeah. And I have a desk drawer full of essentially full of other people's ideas and yeah. other people's work. Yeah. And so there, there's a lot of people out there who have that creative urge. And, and I would encourage anybody out there, don't let my story deter you from going after it. Or well, to me, it's it. not over yet, though. No, I hope not. You know, no, I don't certainly think it is. not. No. Uh, but do it. I mean, that's, yeah. that was the biggest thing for us is, is we wanted to make comics. We could talk about it all day long. Let's actually, let's just do it. It's no regret. Let's do it. Let's try it. It cost us a lot of money, but it was worth it. It's a passion. I, I wouldn't take any of it. I would do it all over again. Maybe there'd be maybe some things that I would have tackled a little bit differently, sure. but for the most part, yeah. I would have done it all the same. I think it's just a matter of time before you so pick if it you up again. Make honestly. comic books, kids. Go make comic books. <laughs> there you go. And you have a Facebook page for Antidote Comics, correct? You know, it's funny we do. Yeah, I I think I, I liked am, it last night. I think so I'm now got, the I think I'm now like the manager of that. Me page and Steve or, liked it. All right, so you got excellent. two new likes. <laughs> yeah, I get reminded every once in a while. It's like people haven't heard from you in a while. It's like I don't even know what to. Put I, out there. I get it. So. I get it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's tough just finding the time. But yeah, at least you have ideas, and like you said, you're working on a novelization, yep. so that's gonna be yeah, great. Yeah, that will hopefully be done by the end of this year, or else I owe my daughter forty bucks. That was our bet. <laughs> it was double or nothing. I was yeah. supposed to have it done by my birthday, which was in June, and yeah. I didn't. And so she was like, "Yeah, you owe me twenty dollars." And I'm like, "All right, double or nothing <laughs> by the end of the year." So well, that's, that's cool. my goal. It's cool to involve like family in that stuff. I hope to do that with my my girls someday. You know, It'd be cool to involve them in the creative process because yeah. they love that stuff. And oh yeah, it, they my, think I'm famous. My, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like I'm not famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My kids. Um, it was fun is like seeing how creative they themselves are. Yeah. When it comes to writing a story, you know, my daughter the other day was telling me about a story that she was writing about. It was a mystery, and she's like, "Yeah, and it takes place at at Disney World." And I'm like, "Okay." You might have to change some of the names because yeah. I can tell you it's not going to allow you to use Disney right, World. Right. And then my son, he's got his own line of comics that he makes. <sighs> That's great, though. It is funny. Fantastic. He calls them Space Wars. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, nice. Is that taken? I don't think Space Wars is taken. I don't know if Star Wars originally was called that or not. I don't but, know. But yeah. uh, his he That's doesn't great, like though. It's funny. He doesn't like Star Wars, yet he riffs on it. In his own way, it's it's funny. He, so. ma- he made what he wants to see. He basically. made yes. Hey, that's that's freaking great, and you could always turn that into something. You know, as kids have so much imagination. I mean, just from my own experience growing up, yeah, I had so much, and if I had access to all this technology we have now, yeah, I, I would have been. You know, I probably would have made a few films by now. I oh mean, man, just, if I had an ounce of artistic talent in my body, I would. Like I can do some art. I can't do comic art. I wish I could. Lately, I do a lot of cheating. I trace. Oh yeah, you do the the Greg Land style where you yeah you use a light box. Well, I don't use that. No, but I I basically take a, uh, a paint dot net is what I use, and I put a layer over what I have, and I just <laughs> trace over it. And yeah, it's something I'm working on for it's because it's quicker. You know, like I have drawn things out, but it takes time. There's good days. There's bad days. This is quicker, unfortunately. But I'm not like I'm not acting like, yeah, I created this out of nowhere, you know, yeah. type of thing. Creative processes, it's great, and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. You got It's hard to find a spotlight to put it put it yeah. in. But it, it's possible. Anything's possible. Absolutely. And like I said, I would love to revisit it at some point. It was a really good experience. Sure. The, the con experience itself. Oh, I bet it's yeah. a lot different too than when you're you know buying the tickets and and you kind of see a different side of it. Yes. Um, 
you see some of the politics involved, but you get to meet a lot of really, really cool creators. Right. And, and it's know, cool to feel a part of that world too. It is. Like, it wow, is because these are people it. that the average person may not recognize these names yeah. or, or care. Right. But, geeks who are in a comic book yeah right it's exciting for us when you get to meet these people who you yeah. idolize their work and and you want feedback from them and they give you critiques and it's stuff i learned a lot from oh yeah from just talking to a lot of different creators over the last several years and it's and i still try and entice feedback when it comes to my writing sure so. i never think my stuff's great sometimes i do in, in retrospect because i'm like wow i wrote that <laughs> like that can't be right yeah but- I- that's, it's tough. I like I said. I sometimes go back and read stuff, and I'm like, ugh, like it's just <laughs> cringy, cringy. Uh, to quote my 13 year old. <laughs> but I mean, hey, that's a hell of an experience, and I look forward to seeing more. Honestly, I yeah, can't wait. So I know it takes time, but you'll get there. We'll all get there. Fingers crossed. Yes. I'm gonna keep keep working. There you go. Well, before we end, we got TV to talk about, and then that's it. Shout out to uh, Henry Winkler. He won his first time Emmy. He's been in the business for a while. I don't know if you're familiar with Fonzie or not. <laughs> yeah, he's see, he's been in the business. I mean, when did Happy Day? Was that 70s? 70s, yeah. 70s show? I mean, yeah. And this is his first Emmy. That's crazy. It's hard to believe that yeah. it's his first Emmy. It's crazy, yeah. He had a funny joke. He wrote this speech 40 years ago, he said. <laughs> and he's one of those two where, you know, we were talking about De Niro phoning it in. He's yeah. one of those actors where he's been doing it since the 70s. Yes. And he's been working. I mean, I don't know that he's ever actually stopped so he's had and he's he's been a producer he produced uh, a yeah. uh, macgyver original macgyver series yeah. yeah and so and he's he's never seemed to phone it in no which is very cool very respectful he's he stayed humble i think yep. the ego has not gotten too big and i haven't seen his new show but uh joey and steve appraised it called barry stars uh bill Hader. i think he's a he's a serial killer I believe he tracks down one of his um jobs and he's an actor and he gets intrigued by acting. So he he's basically a serial killer who's becoming an actor. Okay, all right. I've and Henry Winkler the is the teacher. Okay. And all he's right. a total prick. So he plays against his type, <laughs> which probably is how he got his Emmy. I'm very happy for his success. That's, that's awesome. Lately, DC Universe launched their app, which features a lot of television, movies. And it's growing. It's not a rapid pace, but it just came out the 14th of September. So mm-hmm. people, I think, need to just give it some time. Disney, they're currently working on a streaming service themselves, which is going to be probably more successful because they're going to actually have all the Disney catalog, not just right. Marvel stuff, even though their Marvel stuff would probably be pretty good, too. What's that going to do for the Netflix Marvel shows? I think those are kind of grandfathered in, and they're going to eventually... I think Netflix has the rights to those characters. But once they end, maybe it gets handed over to Disney. I know... They have Disney films on there now. Some of those will just start getting filtered yeah. out. It's going to be a competitive time because uh, I think the streaming service is going to be cheaper than Netflix that they're offering, which I'm kind of sh- I'm shocked. I think people would actually pay a lot for Disney streaming if you're if you're getting the whole catalog. If you're getting everything, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, it's tough. I already pay so much for streaming stuff. I do too. Between I don't have cable, so that does help. Well, but it's I, getting to be cable race. <laughs> yeah, and I and I've got cable just because like for my internet. Yeah. Uh but Netflix, Hulu, yeah. Amazon Prime, yep. uh and then those one offs, stars, HBO, Showtime. <laughs> it's like, oh you it, want those too? Okay. Well, usually I'll I'll Pony subscribe up. to those. Yeah. Binge watch something and then unsubscribe and yeah. then go back to it a year later. That's so, smart. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, it, it becomes it's so much. It is. It is. And this is just one more thing to, to get. But apparently, they're working on a Loki and Scarlet Witch series, separate series. And Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen may reprise those parts. That's huge. Like, they're yeah. movie stars. So the, to them to take on this television property, which it looks like their approach to these uh, television shows is more cinematic like the budgets, I guess, could be the same or more in, in some cases. They're going to be like six to eight episodes. It's very early talks, but they do want to give some of these MCU film characters their own show. Like Hawkeye might be a cool show to I think, have. And that would that would be much cheaper, I think, to do yeah. than your right. Scarlet Witch and With effects Loki. and everything. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. You know, it, I think it's already got a good buzz around it. So, And there's a lot of comparisons now because DC, 
they're first at this, so unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Marvel's going to benefit from their mistakes. Right. Uh, they do have the uh, DC has the Titans show premiering early October, so there is a lot of original content coming. There's a Swamp Thing series I'm very excited about. Um, they have they have a lot on that app. They have comics. I don't know if Disney's going to give you Marvel comics or not, because uh, Marvel I think has their own comic app. They do. Yeah. 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 That's a little different there. Um, currently with the DC streaming, you can get that. Seven ninety nine a month or seventy four ninety nine for the whole year, so that's what I did. I got the whole year, uh, just went for it. Early birthday present, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool uh, app, but I think they put it together pretty well. And yeah, yeah they're still putting things out there. It's going to take some time. There's, there's so much, you know. Uh, the Batman animated series currently is available in HD. Got a lot of good things going for it. But yeah, this Disney service, uh, of course, is another thing I'll probably pay for. It's a side note, but Star Wars, there's talks they're going to uh, cut back on some of that, um, on the films at least. I guess they, they think they went too too soon with all these films, yeah. but I don't know. That's kind of debatable. But there's a John Favreau series coming that's going to be on the streaming service, and it's going to take place after, gosh, what was it called? Return of the Jedi. That, it's going to fill that gap in, and it's got a $100 million budget. Okay. So it's going to be pretty cool. I think that that's really I think that's what we want to see is a lot of these gaps filled in. I would love uh do you remember Shadows of the Empire? Did you ever read that? I don't know. Okay. I it, I'd love to familiar. see yeah. a series of that. It was a video game too. Okay. Uh, yep. It and it kind of fills it takes it doesn't really fill in a gap because it's like separate characters, but sure. it takes place between Empire and Return of the Jedi. Okay. Yep. I'd love to see something that stuff's like that. cool to me. Yeah. That's really cool. And that might be uh, something bad that Disney did was all that canon stuff, you know, all the the books, the fan fiction, they erased it. I mean, yep. from what they're doing, you know, it's still out there, I'm sure. But so they're starting over from scratch, basically. But yeah, I always hear these these cool one off stories and think, why didn't they make this a film? Um, but hopefully, this John Favreau series will uh, really fill in a lot of cool gaps and give us some new characters. Maybe help Star Wars overall. Maybe. Yeah, that'll be. Yeah, I mean, we have episode nine coming, so. <laughs> Which I'm stoked. I know a lot of people are like, yeah. I, I, I am too. But I am I'm, too. And I, I like Solo. Solo's coming out Tuesday, and I'll yeah, buy it. I, I will buy it, it when it comes out. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So, uh, Disney streaming, more more to come on that. There's no title for it yet or not, so we'll see. Fun news for you. Robert England's going to reprise Freddy Krueger for the first time in 15 years. He's going to be on the ABC's The Goldbergs Halloween-themed episode. That's pretty That'll neat. be cool. Yeah, because uh, when was was it Wes Craven's new nightmare, or was the last that time was it, he yeah. played Freddy? Yep. Okay. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, Freddy vs. Jason. Oh yes, I yeah, I forgot about that too. I only saw it once too. Yeah, uh, that was just a comedy, wasn't it? I, I don't remember too much about it. It's I that movie was enjoyable. Yeah, and it was funny how. They did a good job of really making you feel bad for Jason because yeah. Freddy is such a prick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's so know. mean to him. I know. Yeah, um, I'm excited to see him back in the makeup. I think, I think you know, gosh, they still could have made some films with him. But I think even Robert England said that it's tough now to run around and stuff. Yeah, but, and then the last nightmare they did with um, oh, Jack Earl Haley. Yes, yeah, that yeah. had some potential. But I thought he did pretty good as Freddy. I liked, yeah, I, I, did I didn't good. mind. I didn't mind it. Um, uh, maybe they could have done less CG with the face and stuff. I yeah. get what they're doing. They're trying to make it look like, hey, he was a burn victim. Right. It's not cartoon it up or anything. So, yeah, that kind of – maybe that should have been like a continuation or something. Like the new Halloween coming out is. Yes. You know, um, that's – and they ignored a lot of sequels, the ha- the new Halloween film. They're ignoring everything after the first original. I don't, I don't blame them. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. So – that's gonna be really cool though to see him see him back in that iconic uh, makeup. I I don't watch the Goldbergs regularly, but um I think they jump around a lot in the eighties. I don't know how they do it without you know the kids not aging or anything, but they cover a lot of things that are spread out in the eighties. So it's like how how do you um you know I, yeah I've never I've that. never actually watched the show. It's good. Um, I mean from what I've seen, yeah, it's pretty good. But and it's popular, so I don't know. We'll see. Um. See how that goes. I'll definitely tune in for that. I think that'd be pretty, pretty oh, yeah. cool. I'll, I'll tell you, check that or at least DVR it and then go back and watch it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know if you're a big Star Trek fan. I actually got CBS All Access just so I could see the new Star Trek series Discovery. Discovery isn't premiering, I think, until February. So they're going to have these Star Trek short films or shows, 15 
to 30 minutes, I guess, in length. And they released the four titles of the shows, along with the plots, Runaway, Calypso, The Brightest Star, and The Escape Artist for the titles. Uh, each will feature particular characters such as Tilly, Saru, Harry Mudd, and a new crew member, which I don't think they had in the, the series run. They'll have one per month starting October 4th, and it'll end January 3rd. So it's a good good time to get you, you know, get you your trek while you're waiting for the, the big premiere of season two. I'm excited as a Star Trek fan. The more, the better. I don't know when we're going to get our other films. So <laughs> Yeah, Star Trek's one of those, for me, I, I remember as a kid trying to get into... I would watch The Next Generation. Yeah. I, know, I was on that. TV all the time. So I'd Next watch Generation. The Next Generation. I think I... I wasn't old enough to really understand deep space. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. As a kid, I used to call it deep six, nine. And my dad was like, <laughs> that's something different. <laughs> and then I remember there was, um, was it Voyager? Yes. I tried to watch Voyager yeah. and I only got a couple of episodes into that. But then I think everybody else did too. Cause then they, they dropped the show pretty quickly. If I recall, it ran for seven seasons. Did it really? Yeah. Okay. Enterprise ran for three or four. That came after okay. uh, Voyager. Yeah. I only watched a couple of episodes of Voyager and then Enterprise. That was the Scott Bakula one. Mm -hmm. I only watched, I want to say like one or two of those. I was like, I was always on the cusp yeah. of being a fan of Star You're Trek. ready. Yeah. I, I ready and willing. I just yep. couldn't get pulled into it. You had it. the shirt and everything ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> the uh, I, I would practice the Vulcan neck pinch on my brother. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, it was the Chris Pine movie, the J.J. Abrams one, that really kind of made me a fan of what kind of potential it had. Yeah. But I think that was also because it was very not Star Trek-like. Yeah, it had a lot of Star lot Wars of type. Of, yeah. Uh, and it was just flashy. And yes. Colorful. And so I was like, oh, that's... Big, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like the Star Trek that I can get into. So I really liked that. And then even the um, the second, the sequel... Mm -hmm. I like that one not as much as the first one. Right. And so then with the third one, I haven't even seen it yet. The third one's good. It pays a lot, a lot of homage to the... I think the trailer with the third one kind of killed it for me. Where I was like... And that's the marketing's fault. Because yeah, I was it's like, that not, trailer just doesn't make it's any sense. It's not Fast and Furious in space. I don't think so. All right. Um, it's good. I like I'll have it. To go, I'll have to go back and check it out. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. But yeah, Discovery's really good. High production value. Very cinematic looking. Uh, that's actors great. are just... Top notch. And is that only viewable on CBS All Access? Yes. Okay. Yes. Unless you live in the UK, you can get on Netflix. All right. So if you know someone in the UK, I can give you a password or something. No. Um, and if anyone can hack me into <laughs> Netflix UK, let me know. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize until I was down in Mexico a couple years ago that there are different Netflixes for different countries. Because when we were down in Mexico, we were watching a Netflix series. I want to say it was a Scream series. Oh, okay. From yeah, like yeah. MTV, maybe? Yeah. And it was a right. well-done TV series. We were watching that, but we didn't have a chance to finish it. Yeah. So we get back <laughs> to the United States, and we can't find it. And oh, like, no. We have no idea <laughs> what happened to it, and it was like not available on the U.S. at that time. Uh, so that's how I learned you had different series or different content in different countries. Right. Get a cable and just run it from... <laughs> right. That, weird, that was weird. Cross the pond. Cross the pond. Well, lastly, uh, I don't know if you got any recommendations you want to throw out there for people. I would say, you know, check out Unadult Comics and all the stuff yeah, you guys I mean, yeah, have done. Ch yeah, check it out. Um, like I said, not a, not a lot of new content out there, but check out what we do have and, you know, check me out. Just, you know, Facebook, Instagram, sure. whatever. Pretty easy to follow. Uh was a Joe Gun Warrior on Instagram if you want to see pictures of little plastic men. <laughs> it's either little plastic men or cigars hey, or whiskey. Alcohol, yep. whatever. Yeah, it's all good. It's all uh, good. As far as shows, uh, what am I watching right now? So um, on USA, I've been watching The Sinner, season two of The Sinner. Okay. Which is which is excellent. The Jessica Biel? Uh, so she's in season one. She's not in season two. Oh, okay. However, okay. Um, the president from Independence Day... Pullman, Bill oh, Pullman. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. His character is in both, okay. and so it picks up. You know, it's kind of a continuation of his character story. Sure. Uh, so that's really good. And then we also started watching The Purge on USA. Oh, the sh the series, the TV series. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. because I, the movies, your mileage may vary. What I really like is the whole concept behind it and mm -hmm. how much of a, of a story you can tell. Because if you think like with the first Purge movie, that was like twenty five years into the Purge having already been going on. Right. You've got 25 years of stories there to tell, and I think there's so much that you can do, and I think a series is a really good way to try and handle a lot of that. Sure. 
And I talk about it with my wife all the time when we're driving around. We're like, what would a purge look like in a small town? What would a purge look like oh, in this neighborhood? There'd be what no more town, like? probably. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, and so, you know, how would these characters, what would they do? How would they act? Would they be kind to one another? Would they, yeah, would they wipe each other out and you'd have nothing left of an entire town? Right. I mean, though, there's so much there that you can do story wise. And I think that it's fascinating. I, I hope that this series does well enough that they're able to, sure. to dive into more of that. So we'll Did see. Did you see all the films as well? Except for the last one, the first one, I didn't see that because I was like, "This looks really terrible." Really, yeah. But I liked the other ones. I don't know so. if it turned out well or not, but it was interesting how it was the first purge. The f- yeah, and it looked like the people weren't really partaking into it. And, and I and I can kind of see that because I could kind of see it's weird. It's I could like, look back and say, "Okay, if it is the very first purge, I, you probably have a lot of people who are really hesitant and yeah. not know what to even do." And then you have other people who'd be like, it's Christmas. Right. You know, so. Well, it looks like the plot had the government like, like, okay, we'll start something. Right. And that's how it just. Yeah, we'll get the ball. Yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So the series must take place after the first purge, I take it? It or? does. They don't really, I don't know if they've indicated how many years it's been going on. Right. Uh, or it could be its own thing. But yeah, I, yeah, films. it could be its own yeah. universe altogether. Sure, sure. But so far, I've enjoyed it. Uh, so Good. those are the two series that I'm watching. And then everything else is I'm trying to think. Twenty twenty, like 2020. documentaries. Like there you go. My wife's a big fan of that stuff. Oh, so we yeah. watch a lot of that. That's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Um. I don't really have much to recommend right now. I'm sure in a week I'll say check out Jack Ryan. Check it out anyway. <laughs> it's supposed to be really good. So. Yeah, I'd like to thank you for being on the show, and uh, yeah, you're welcome yeah, back thanks. anytime. Of course. Um. It was fun, man. It was fun. We could uh, could talk all day. Yeah, thanks for oh, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having me, and sure. uh, definitely look forward to coming back and joining you guys again. Excellent, excellent. Well, with that said, we'll be back next week. I'm Josh. I'm Jonah. Take care. Bye.